we're going to be going over one way you can write tests for your GraphQL resolvers. Now we've been using type GraphQL, but this will also work no matter how you create your GraphQL schemas. And we'll see why that is in a little bit. Now the tests that we're going to be write, writing is kind of, I would consider an integration test. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to call our GraphQL resolvers. Um, and we're going to actually allow their GraphQL resolvers to make requests to the database and update the database or receive data from it for both mutations and queries. And then we can either check the database to see if stuff worked and also check the response from the resolvers and make sure we get the right data back uh, that we would expect. Now we're going to be starting off by setting up a test runner, which we're going to be using just for this. And we're using TypeScript, so we're going to use TS just. And we're just going to go through the getting started of this. So we need to install both of these uh, Jest, TypeScript, TS Jest, and the types for Jest. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to run the uh, command it says right here to initialize the configuration file. And what that'll do is that's going to just create a Jest.config file. And you should have these inside of it. Uh, and then the first thing that I want to do is I want to basically drop the database or at least create a test database that we can use. Um, and then we're going to drop that database every time we run a test just to clear out all the data. Now, in the past, I've tried using global setup, if you're familiar with Jest. Um, but sometimes it hasn't really worked for me. And I get messages about promises being open and Jest not being able to quit out. Uh, so one method I've been using lately uh, is just to create a little script that will drop the uh, database before it starts. So I'm going to create a folder called test utils in my source directory and I'm going to create a new file in it which I'm going to call test uh, con and so this is just going to create a test connection to the database. So I'm going to export const test con um, and then here we're just going to return create connection from type orm and now we need to put in our information of how, how to actually create a connection here usually we use an orm config but I want to overwrite some of these so I'm just going to copy what we have here paste it in and then we're going to change a few so first off I'm not wanting to log for the test the SQL commands um, I also want to add drop schema and we'll set that to true now there's two types of test connections that we want to make. We want to make an initial test connection at the beginning of all of our tests, like once. Um, and this is to drop the database and clear out the data and make sure the tables look good. And then we're going to need to create test connections inside of each test file. So to switch between those, we don't want to continue dropping the database. So I'm going to create a Boolean here called drop. And this is going to be default uh, false. And this will make more sense in a second when you see how we use this test connection. So I'm going to create a setup.ts file. All it's going to do is call test connection and pass in true. And then sometimes when you run an async function like this one is, or one that returns a promise, uh, I just have to say dot then and say process.exit because sometimes node doesn't quit out whenever it finishes with the promise. So I usually just do this. Um, all right, so now in my package.json, what I want to do is add a script. And this is going to be test. And so what it's going to do is I'm going to say ts node, and we're going to call source slash test utils slash test con dot ts. Actually, not test con, sorry, setup. Uh, and we don't actually need to call this uh, test. We can actually just call this uh, DB setup. And basically, whenever we call this uh, TS node on this, all it's going to do is it's going to create a type arm connection, which is going to drop the schema and it's going to synchronize the tables. Uh, so after that is our actual test command. And that's just going to call jest. And so I'm going to run npm run db setup before we run jest. So every time I run yarn test, it's going to clean out the database and then it's going to go ahead and run the tests for it. All right, so now let's actually get into what a test looks like. So I'm going to go inside of modules over here. 
and we're going to start by writing a test for the register. So I'm going to go inside the register folder here and I'm going to say register.test.ts. So first thing is we're going to be making some calls to the database in here. So to be able to do that, we need to create a connection inside of this test file. So I'm going to say before all inside of here, and we're going to say const, well not const, await test con. So here we're just going to call our test connection to go ahead and create it. And you'll notice here we're not going to pass in true because we don't want to drop the database for every single test just once at the beginning. Also, one thing I just realized is uh, this entities is probably not the right uh, path. So this is outside of modules. So we really need to go up one inside of entity like that. Uh, the other thing is I'm just going to use the dir name here to make sure that it's correct. Uh, no matter, uh, so the path doesn't get messed up. So we're going to do up a directory inside of entity. Uh, other thing is I want to change this uh, so it doesn't use the same database that I'm using in development. I'm going to call it type GraphQL dash example dash test. All right, uh, and then I just need to create the database for that. Um, so now I have this database that we can use for testing. All right, cool. Um, so back to our test. The other thing is I opened a test or a connection, so I need to close the connection so we can use after all. And if you're not too familiar with Jest, these are special functions that get run. So this is gonna run before all our tests and it's gonna run after all our tests. So here I'm just gonna say let con and it's gonna be of the type connection from type warm. And then we're just saying connection.close. Now close returns a promise. We can see that if we hover over, uh, void promise. So I'm just gonna wait the finish of it. So now we're ready to go ahead and write the test. So I'm gonna put describe here. So this is a jest thing. So this is where we describe what this test is for. So this is gonna be for the register resolver. I'm just gonna call it register. And then we're gonna pass in a function. And then here we can put our individual tests. So our first test, we're gonna say create user. And inside of here, we can now create the user. So I mentioned earlier that we want to basically call our resolvers. So one option is you could actually literally call the resolver since it is a function. Now this is slightly more difficult with type GraphQL and it would be very different depending on what you use to create your resolvers. And I had mentioned that this method will work no matter how we create our GraphQL schema. So instead of calling our, our thing directly, uh, what I like to be able to do is, and what I've used in the past is starting up a server and then basically making post requests to the server. Uh, but I found a slightly easier way uh, where you actually just directly call the GraphQL schema using the GraphQL function. So we can say GraphQL, which comes from GraphQL. And what GraphQL does is it takes in a few parameters. So we can actually pass in our schema. And this is where I said it doesn't matter how you create your schema. You just pass in a schema. And then we can pass in a source, which is a GraphQL mutation or a query, or I guess a subscription would work too. Um, and then we would actually execute it. Now we're going to be calling this a lot in all of our tests. So I like to make like a little helper function. So in my test utils, I usually call it gcall. Um, and what it's going to do here is it's just going to return GraphQL. So it's going to just return the GraphQL call and it's kind of just going to wrap it because there's going to be some things that we're going to do multiple times and we don't want to repeat it. So here we're going to just really just call gcall. All right, so first thing that we're going to do is the schema that I mentioned. So the schema, the way we're building the GraphQL schema, if we go into our index file, is we're calling build schema. So I'm just going to copy this and we're going to put it over there. And again, if you have a more complex schema, I'm going to make this async as well. Uh, if you have a more uh, complex schema or build schema here, you may want to make a function that returns it. That way we don't have this duplicate auth checker logic. Um, so why don't we do that real quick? So inside of, uh, 
I was thinking utils, but utils is kind of inside of modules. So maybe I'll create like an outside folder called utils. And I'll say create schema.ts. And I'll say export cons create schema. And all this is going to do is it's going to call build schema. So this is kind of abstracts it a little bit. So GraphQL, no. This is coming from type GraphQL. Cool. So now I can call that in both these places and abstract the logic of it. So we'll say create schema. And I'm going to cre call create schema over here as well. All right. It's complaining about something. Oh, source is missing. We'll add that in a second. All right. So we're not using it here. And then in our create schema over here, just want to make sure this is the right path. So it's going to be this directory. And we need to go up a directory now, I believe, um, to get to modules. Uh, we'll make sure this works uh, in a second, though. So here we're going to say we have our G call over here. It was complaining about not having a source. So let's add that. And source is going to be coming in from the props there. And actually, let's call this options. So I'm going to create an interface to make sure we have a type definition for the options that we can pass in here. So we're going to say source string. And we can pass it in. So now what's going to happen is this is a very basic version of this. We're going to add on to this in a second. We also need to pass in variable values, which is also something that is optional. Variable values. And variables can be anything, so I'm just going to say any there. Uh, I think they can, they're technically, okay, a maybe map. So we can copy that. And where does maybe come from? GraphQL maybe? Cool. I wonder if I can just import it from here. Nope, looks like it's kind of buried. All right, so we can try out this gcall now. So before we actually try out gcall, I just want to make sure our create schema works. So if I do yarn start, let's just make sure it does not crash. Um, oh yes, I think it is going to crash in a second. And we'll see why that is, is because we added a dot test. So it's saying uh, before all is not defined. So what's happening here is it's looking for all our resolvers and it found a dot test file. It read that in uh, because in our uh, thing over here, we said grab all the .ts files. So it doesn't know which one are resolvers and which ones are test files right now. So that's kind of our problem. Uh, the way we have set this set up is we have all our resolvers in the top level. So one way we can get rid of it is just make it stop going infinitely deep. Uh, the other way is we could actually add a file name onto this, like change password.resolver. Um, and if I did that, then I could say, find all the dot resolver ones. Uh, and so maybe I'll change it to that afterwards because that's going to require some typing. But for now, I think that should fix it. And it looks like it started up okay. So our create scheme is good. Let's go ahead and see how we can use this G call that I'm referring to. So in our test, I'm going to start by saying const, or actually let's just console log it to see what happens. So we're going to say await G call. And we need to pass in and we just set a wait here, so we need to make this function async. So source is going to be a string. So for this, I usually like to say, like, register mutation and just add the string here. Now, I went ahead and just wrote out the register mutation, and I added the variables. So I added a data variable, and this data variable is just going to be a register input. Uh, and a register input, if you remember, looks like this has a first name, last name, and email. All right, so let's go ahead and pass those in. So first, the source, which is going to be the register mutation up here, um, and the variable values. Uh, so this is going to be what the variables are. So in our case, we call it data. And what data is, is it needs to have a first name, last name, and email. So first name, Bob, last name, 
bob2 and email dot 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 dot. Oh, you know what? Sorry, I should pick a, diff a better email at least. Just do bob, bob.com. Uh, I, I forgot we're also extending the password mix in that we created, so there's also a password. All right, so save that. Uh, and let's just run our test. So what should happen is we create a database already, but it should drop the database and clean it up. Well, there's nothing in there. It should just really create the tables for us. Uh, now it should run our test. Uh, so this is one thing that I ran into when I was doing global uh, tests, or sorry. Oh, okay. I wonder if our resolver, just because it returns a promise. I forgot we're sending an email in our resolver. But anyway, this detect open handles, I always run into. Uh, and that was one problem I had when I tried doing a global setup with Jest. So I tried it uh, without it and see if that would help. Um, so we're closing the connection too, so I think that should help. But anyway, let's look at this and worry about that in a second. So here's what we're console logging from our register test. So you'll notice we just register uh, a Bob user and we can see that data. So basically we just called a graph, our GraphQL mutation there. Uh, so we can use that to basically test it. So for example, I could expect what I expect uh, to get back from the mutation, or I can take this and I can actually find uh, this in the database if I want to and make sure it, it exists. Now, before we write the expect for this, I just want to mention that uh, this create schema right here, we're going to create the schema every single time we call this. And so that's kind of inefficient. So what we might do instead is create a variable up here to kind of like cache it. So, so this is going to be a GraphQL schema. So I'm going to say schema is equal to a GraphQL schema. And we're going to say schema dot await. And we're only going to do this if it doesn't exist. So if the schema does not exist, we're going to create it. Um, and so now we can actually write the test. And we can call gcall multiple times uh, and be able to test it uh, and not create the schema every single time. So this is kind of the framework that we're going to be using to write tests. So we're going to be using this gcall and then expecting uh, the data to be in a certain format and we can also check uh, against the database if we want and make sure the data is there. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video here because it's getting a little bit long and uh, this is kind of the setup for the tests and then we'll get into the details of more of what the tests look like uh, in the next video.